Hi, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at Born Harbor cycles. This particular Born Harbor cycle will be for potassium sulfide. This is the third video in a series of videos on Born Harbor cycles. If you want to check out some of those earlier videos, please do click on the card which will appear now. So, as before, a Born Harbor cycle is a thermochemical cycle used to calculate an unknown enthalpy change of interest. In this particular example, I want to know what the lattice enthalpy for the formation of potassium sulfide is, but I don't know that information. So instead, we're going to take an alternative route two, with many other enthalpy changes included, to discover route one via Hess's law. Because according to Hess's law, the enthalpy change of a chemical reaction is the same independent of the route taken. So if I can work out the enthalpy change of route two, then it will give me the enthalpy change of route one as well. So the first thing I have to do is to fill in the various enthalpy changes taking place. Starting with this one bottom left, which is the enthalpy change of formation of potassium sulfide. The enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of a substance with its elements in their standard state under standard conditions. So the elements in their standard state in this particular example would be potassium and sulfur. Potassium being a metal is a solid and sulfur is a solid non-metal, yellow in color. Now I'm making the compound potassium sulfide, which has the formula K2S. That's an arnic compound for giant arnic structure. The next enthalpy change we're going to be dealing with is the enthalpy change of atomization labeled AT for both potassium and sulfur respectively. The enthalpy of atomization is the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of atoms in their gaseous state from one mole of atoms in their reference or standard state under standard conditions. So, in other words, we've been turning these two moles of potassium atoms in the solid state into two moles of potassium atoms in the gaseous state. I haven't yet atomized the sulfur atoms. That comes next, though. The next enthalpy change is the atomization of sulfur. So, again, we convert one mole of sulfur atoms in the solid state into one mole of sulfur atoms in the gaseous state. Now, all of the atoms of the various elements present are in the gaseous state. The next enthalpy change is responsible for turning the metal atoms into metal ions. It's known as the first ionization energy. That's defined as being the enthalpy change for the removal of one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of monopositive or one plus ions. Now we have two moles of potassium atoms. So we're going to form two moles of K plus ions by removing two moles of electrons from those atoms. We have yet to ionize the sulfur. Next, we're going to look at turning the sulfur atoms into sulfide ions. That's going to involve the first and second electron affinity. The first electron affinity is defined as being the enthalpy change for the addition of one mole of electrons to one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of mononegative ions. And that is shown by this equation here, making minus one sulfide ions. And of course, sulfide ions actually form minus two ions because they can gain two electrons Per atom. So we've got to go on to the second electron affinity next. So the second electron affinity adds a second mole of electrons onto those minus one sulfide ions to form minus two sulfide ions. You may notice that the second electron affinity is actually an endothermic process rather than an exothermic process. That's because we're now trying to push electrons onto an already negative species and there's going to be repulsion between that negative, those negative sulfide minus one ions and the incoming negative electrons. So it takes more energy, it requires energy to add those additional electrons onto an already negative species. And hence that process is endothermic, not exothermic in nature. Okay, so things have gotten busy, but let me explain what's going on. I've added in all the various enthalpy change values for these enthalpy changes taking place. Now, of course, we're still trying to find the change of lattice enthalpy for potassium sulfide. Now we can't directly determine that enthalpy change, but we can take an alternative route that produces the same product. And according to Hess law, the enthalpy change of a chemical reaction is the same independent of the route taken. So if we work out the full enthalpy change of route two, it will be identical and equal to the enthalpy change of route one, and therefore we'll find the missing enthalpy change. I'm gonna take you through how we do that now. So the trick to making sure you always go around the cycle in the right direction is as follows. You put a circled starting point around the tail of the enthalpy change arrow you're looking for. You then put a box around the head of the enthalpy change arrow you're looking for and write finish there. Now we cannot go directly from start to finish and know that enthalpy change. 
Instead, we're going to start at the starting point and take route two around the cycle until we get to the finishing point. Anytime we go against the direction of an enthalpy change arrow on the Born Harbor cycle, we are doing the opposite energetics to that process. So we're going to take this route. We're doing the opposite energetics of the second electron affinity, the opposite energetics of the first electron affinity, the opposite energetics of the first ion energy, energy twice, because it's times two, the opposite energetics of the atomization of sulfur the opposite energetics of the atomization of potassium times two, because there's two moles of potassium atoms present. And finally, we're gonna do the same energetics going with the arrow in this final stage, the same energetics as the enthalpy of formation. And the sum of all those energy changes will give us the same value as the enthalpy change of root one. And so here is the end calculation working. And as I work through it, little hands will point to the area of the born harbor cycle we're talking about as we move around. So we're doing the opposite energetics of the second electron affinity, the opposite energetics of the first electron affinity, the opposite energetics of the first ionization energy times two, the opposite energetics of the atomization of sulfur, the opposite energetics of the atomization of potassium times two, and finally we're going with the same direction of arrows, we're doing the same energetics as the enthalpy of formation of potassium sulfide. And the sum of all those enthalpy changes that make up root two gives us a value of minus 1989 kilojoules per mole. According to Hess law, since root two has the same energetics as root one, then root one also has an enthalpy change value of minus 1989 kilojoules per mole, and we've solved the problem presented. Well done guys, excellent work. Now, as I've shown you in the past, there is a neat little trick you can use to see if that answer is correct. If Hess law is applied correctly, then if we take away root one from root two, then the answer will be zero because they both have the same magnitude. And let's see if that works. We're basically gonna go full cycle round this born harbor cycle from the starting point back to the starting point, And hopefully the energetics of that process will be absolutely nothing. So here we go. It's minus plus 532 minus minus 200 minus plus 408 times 2 minus 223 minus plus 90 times 2 and then finally plus minus 418 because we're going with that last arrow here now we're going to go against the enthalpy change of the arrow we just calculated, which is minus our answer, minus, minus 1989, which is our answer from the previous section, equals a big fat zero, proving the Hess law is in effect and our answer is definitely correct. It's a great way of just checking you're working right at the end of your answer. Amazing. Thanks so much for listening, guys. That's really hugely appreciated. Don't forget, if you found this useful, you could always think about giving the video a like. You could even think about subscribing to the channel. You could even ring the bell. Keep notified about latest content. I'm trying to put up videos at least on a weekly basis. And you could even share this content with friends who are studying chemistry to help them along as well. I really want to support as many people as possible in their studies of chemistry. And as always, your support is hugely appreciated in helping me to keep motivated and make videos on a weekly basis. Really great talking to you. I can't wait to talk to you again in the next video. Take care. Bye now.